We all get these emails every single day that come in our inbox that look like they could be from your bank. They look like they might be from PayPal or Amazon or eBay or whatever. And they all say things like, you know, um, we detected suspicious activity and we've frozen access to your account. And we need you to click on this link and confirm some account details. And if you click on that link, it takes you to a page that looks to, to, a, right, to a normal person. It looks like it's a legitimate eBay or Amazon or whatever, but they ask you some very specific odd questions towards Royal Bank or whatever the bank is, and they'll ask you things like, you know, what's your username, and they'll ask you for your password, and then they'll ask you for your credit card number, and your CVV code, and your expiry date, and your full address, your social insurance number. They'll ask you basically to tell them everything about you so they can build a complete file on everything they need to know to steal your identity. Um, on top of that, they've already got the username and password now for your eBay account or your Amazon account, so they can go in and change your password and, and perhaps, depending on what their motives are, Amazon and eBay, they may try and take over your account and on eBay they may try and sell goods that don't actually exist. In the case of Amazon, they may try and, and purchase items using stolen credit card information and have it shipped somewhere else. By the time Amazon catches on that it was a stolen credit card, the item's already been shipped, and a lot of times you're left on the hook for it because it was on your account. Um, in the case of banks, I mean, obviously the danger there is quite obvious. A uh, wire transfer to some uh, country overseas, once that wire transfer has been initiated and it's been accepted on the other side, that money's gone, it's not coming back. Um, <clears throat> so education is, is a huge, huge piece of that. So you need to be able to determine uh, whether an email is legitimate or not. And I'll be honest, there have been some emails um, that have almost fooled me. As I write for Fortinet's blog, I posted something recently about an email I got from Amazon that if you looked at it, I was certain it was a legitimate Amazon receipt. But I'm like, well, I didn't just buy a 46-inch TV and ship it to some guy in Washington State. I don't remember doing that. It must have been some night out that I don't remember buying 46-inch television. So <clears throat> I almost clicked on one of those links, and it turned out that link was not a legitimate link. It went to some site that was meant to deliver malware. So it fools me. I mean, it's difficult, some of these things, to, to, to not fool the average computer user. Um, but if you can just take a moment and pause and ask yourself every time you see something like that, What's the chance this isn't actually from company X? Um, is it actually uh, fraudulent? Um, so the best piece of advice I can give there is um, if you're not sure that an email is from where it says it's supposed to be from and it's something that appears to be urgent, don't open the email, don't click on a link, open up your browser and go directly to the website itself. Type in you know, Amazon.com or eBay or you know, your bank. And if something really is that urgent, most likely they'll give you a message when you log in or in your, 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 your messages from the bank or Amazon saying something's up. And if all that fails, call the bank itself. Call the 800 number on the back of your credit card or debit card and ask to speak to someone in internet security. All these outfits have, uh, have departments that are, are set up to deal with this kind of stuff now. And you say, well, I got an email that looked like it came from, from your bank. Um, has my account actually been frozen? Is there something going on or, is, or should I just delete this? And you know what? Um, you may feel embarrassed. You may feel kind of silly or stupid to say, well, I couldn't tell the difference and I called the bank and they're going to make fun of me. Well, you know what? The banks don't care. They want you to call them. They want you to err on the side of caution because the cost to the bank and the cost to yourself is way more than you picking up the phone and spending five minutes on the phone with someone else. They rather you you play it safe than sorry because the mess that's created when, when your money stolen or your financial information stolen, your identity stolen, is, is scores worse than just picking up the phone and calling. Uh, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. We don't know everything about everything. I mean, um, I don't fix my own car and it's into a mechanic. Um, I can't expect you to know everything about the computer, so um, call someone else, talk to a friend, talk to someone who you knows more about. There are a lot of other things you can do to protect yourself, but education is, is just like any other part of your life, education is the most important.
perfect way to protect yourself.